Hello and welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today we are talking about Punjab and Royal Challenges. I am your mediator, Benji, between James the Punjab fan and Zach the RCB fan. And we're going to be talking about yeah the latest match in this year's IPL where RCB managed to come out on top with four balls remaining. James, have you got over it yet? Oh, yeah. I like I... <laughs> I think every team's won their first home game. So from that perspective, it's a level playing field so far in the IPL. Um, obviously, there's frustration from a, a Punjab fan's perspective. And um, I think we've also learned a fair bit about the teams. So, you know, I've, I've got both sides of it where I'm like, I'm frustrated because my the team I like lost. Um, but I've also, you know, I feel like I've, got a better rounded knowledge of what RCB and Punjab Kings are about. Um, unfortunately, it's not that positive uh, a knowledge that I've gained. Um, I think I've I've sort of identified more weaknesses in both teams than I have strengths. Um, there are definite upsides though. So yeah, I, I was, uh, it was obviously frustrating because um I, th- I think the batting was where Punjab lost it. They they batted very timidly, um, lost lost wickets at crucial junctures, which is obviously testament to to how Punjab uh, to how RCB bowled. But und- underwhelming batting performance against a relatively mediocre bowling attack, um, and then you know uh, RCB the. They they did really well. Like Virat Kohli was outstanding. He was absolutely brilliant. He he had a life. Um, Johnny Bairstow put him put him down on zero runs, but he completely capitalised. And there's nobody else you really want in a chase mm-hmm. than Virat Kohli. And then having uh, DK come in at the end and do what he did is uh, is brilliant. And yeah. also big bright sparks for RCB in the fact that their uncapped Indian players. Um, are looking quite exciting as well. Yeah, I mean, people called it the Kohli and um, the Kohli and Karthik show today, which you know I think is probably quite true. It was the two of them that really broke the back of the chase today. Um, a few things though, I think it's a bit unfair to say that RCB has a poor or like an underwhelming bowling attack because I think actually there there's some hope there. Like Mohammed, I didn't, Rad, I didn't you know, say poor. I said mediocre. Me- and I okay, stand even by mediocre, that. I think, is harsh because Mohammed Siraj is a is is a world class bowler. Yash Dayal is an up and comer. He's part of the Indian. He's got an Indian fast bowling contract for for central contract. So you know he's he's one that's being developed. Alzari Joseph. Let's not forget that man has got the best figures in the IPL ever of six for fourteen from four overs. Rohit Sharma's got, got a hat trick in the IPL as well. Yeah, so so <laughs> I think you know there's 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 a lot in there. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that you're right, and, and Zach, we'll come to you about your thoughts on RCB in just a second about Punjab losing those regular wickets. I think aside from Shikhar Darwin, nobody really stuck around and 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 played a really um, sensible knock today. I think that Liam Livingston and Sam Curran both just could have done better with their wickets today, really. I think that realistically Punjab were 15, 20 runs short on what looked like a half decent track today. Um, but yeah, do, Zach, do you think that your RCB bowlers bowled well? Would you call them a mediocre bowling attack? Because I think that's a bit hard. <laughs> no, I wouldn't call them mediocre, but I think there are definite weaknesses when you compare their bowling attack with other sides. So for example, we don't have like a standout bowler who can like, like, uh, Jasper Brummer cheat code essentially we don't have one of those um we also don't have a very class like a world class spinner like a lot of sides do like you look at the Punjab Kings bowling lineup in in comparison and Arshdeep Singh I know he didn't bowl that well today but he's renowned for being very good at the death Kagisa Rabada has been in and amongst the top wicket takers for the number of IPL seasons he's been playing um, Rahul Chahar, I know he's he's in a bit of a slump of form, but he's a decent leg spinner and, and got that calibre. So I, I think when you compare the RCB bowling lineup, they don't have quite that those number of players. And Alsari Joseph, we know he's a good bowler, 
he, he's had some very good spells in the past. It's just we haven't seen him do it consistently. And maybe this season, having a consistent role in the RCB side, we'll, we'll see him improve, and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but overall, I think Yashtayal looks pretty good at the top, bowling in the power play. Mohamed Saraj, we know he's good in the power play. It's just that issue with the death bowling, which will probably come back to bite us in, in more games than we'd like. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they balance it. But in terms of the batting, what we saw from Punjab versus RCB is a, a contrast where Punjab Kings, everyone kind of chipped in and made starts, but no one really went on to make that Kohli innings. Whereas if you look at the RCB side, Kohli made that innings and then Dinesh Kartik finished it off. Um, there was that one batsman who went on. Uh, and I think from RCB, if players like Faf Dupasi, Cameron Green, Glenn Maxwell, these players who you'd expect would make those starts, if they'd made those starts, then I think RCB would have won a lot sooner because, to be honest, at the end of the Punjab innings, I, I would also be frustrated if I was a Punjab Kings fan. You'd feel like you were 10, 15, maybe 20 runs too too short on that pitch. Um, and and it took some very good death hitting from Dinesh Kartik and Mahopal Lomro to to take us over the line. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm obviously very happy as an RCB fan. Um, and it 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 feels good knowing that players like Mahopal Lomro, Anna Drawa and Didesh Kartik, who bat down the order and are known for their finishing ability, have come good at this stage. Because if you then add in the the batting strength of Maxwell Green and Dupasi added onto that with Cody looking in, in the former years, this innings, it, it makes our batting lineup look quite scary. Um if, if they all start to come good. I just hope that we don't those other players don't stay out of form. Um James, yeah. your thoughts then on the Punjab bowling because Kagisa Abada, he looked very good today. Yeah, he did. And so did Harpreet Bra. Um, mm. Harpreet Bra has looked good the last couple of games, which it kind of surprises me because he doesn't get that much game time at all for Punjab, his domestic side. So uh, the fact that he almost goes like a year between playing and then you know, can jump by, uh, right back into that rhythm is is very impressive. He was, um, he was the standout, obviously. Uh, taking two for 13 off his four overs. Um, and then, yeah, the death bowling uh, in general wasn't superb. Um, I'd say there's probably some poor decision-making. I don't think Harshal Patel is actually a death bowler that much. I think he's more of a middle overs enforcer. I wouldn't actually categorize him as a, you know, a premium death bowler because um, I just don't think he has... If you're trying to defend a low total, I don't think he quite has the uh, the right technique for it. I think if it's a high total, or if it's you know batsman really trying to just push and you know uh, get the get the incentive on their side, then Harsh Patel becomes really difficult to face because he's got all the those slower variations and the um, and and just deliveries that look the same but are coming at completely different speeds. So. That's what I think. I think RCB should be really happy, though. Um, and I think the winner of this this match should have been satisfied because it's going to be one of the easier fixtures for both teams because I don't think either team played as well as they could have done. Um, there were big, big mistakes on both sides. And ultimately, it should have been an easy victory for one of the sides. And it was almost testament to to quite a few errors that it ended up being quite a close fought match. It should have been a, a 190 plays 191 kind of match, but it was, uh, you know, chasing down 178 in, in 19 uh, and yeah. a half overs. Yeah. I, I, as a neutral to this game, I was just thoroughly entertained. Um, I also was thoroughly entertained by your two WhatsApp messages, both thinking that your individual team was going to lose. That made me laugh quite a lot as well. Um, I was right. <laughs> you were right, James. It, it, it's interesting what yeah, you say the about, hollow victory. <laughs> about Harshal Patel because he has been branded as this death bowlers over as this death overs bowler for the last two or three years. And and I actually agree with you. Like, yeah, he, he got the purple cap a couple of years ago, but I'm pretty sure that was was that a year when they were playing in the UAE rather than actually Yeah, in they India? didn't play as much at, at the Chinaswami. I mean RCB changed a lot of their team because they were then moving to the Chinnaswamy. Like yeah. Asaranga, we saw his first season at the Chinnaswamy, not as nowhere near as effective. And I mean, like just thinking about the sides and, and 
James, you saying about it should have been a comfortable victory for both sides. If you look at these teams, I know Royal Challengers have had Virat Kohli for for a long time, Faf Dupsi and Glenn Maxwell for for a number of seasons now, but none of these teams, RCB or Punjab, you would say are settled like a Chennai Super Kings team where everyone's got their role. Everyone knows exactly what they play. They've got their set of 11s. You look at someone like Mumbai Indians, Gujarat Titans, right? They've they lost Hardik, Hardik Pandya who's a massive member of that side. And yet Omazai is kind of fitting in that role. So everyone in those teams knows what they're doing. And, and it's, it's quite settled. Whereas this RCB side, the Punjab side, they're still trying to find their feet. I mean, they're, they're messing about with their batting orders. You don't see the, the teams that are winning consistently do that. And so hopefully, from, from both teams' perspective, we'll see more settling as we go through the tournament. Because if they don't settle, then the chances of them qualifying become a lot a lot slimmer. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I, agree. I think but... the number one lesson that we've learned from this match is power play intensity and um, ge- general aggressiveness in the power play is really, really important. And it, I year, think that, that might be a theme. Because yeah. obviously Virat Kohli dropped second ball, but ended up hitting four fours in that first over, I think. And straight away that uh, got his innings up and running very, very fast. And I think throughout the power play, his his strike rate didn't dip below 200. Mm-hmm. And, and he really capitalized. He He was hitting deliveries over the fielders, making the most of the time where the infield is in. And uh, if you contrast that with Punjab Kings, they didn't make the most of it at all. Johnny Bairstow hit a couple of, um, I don't know, that like there were decent shots that he hit for, for two fours, but uh, it was very, he was almost premeditating the full ball at that point. And his third shot, it was almost like a drive that he tried to, you know, just flash at. Yeah. And he didn't make the most of it. I think perhaps Simran Singh, actually did a little bit more. I um I thought he had the best intent from Punjab. Uh so th- that was the big difference for me was yeah. those first six overs getting your innings underway in the right manner makes all the difference because it didn't matter so much that RCB lost Faf very early for you know and, and Faf it, it wasn't a good innings from him three off seven mm. but because Coley was putting in that intent at the start it made all the difference. And if Coley um, hadn't had that same intent, if he'd gone at about a strike rate of 120 in the power play, suddenly the subpar total, which it definitely was, becomes almost a tall order. Mm. And it shouldn't have been. Um, and it was only because RCB, uh, they, they had a you know sort of middle order capitulation. If you look at down that scorecard, it's not pretty. Um, and it was only because of of those consistent mistakes that it then became slightly closer. But RCB, if anybody had stuck around with Coley, um, like Zach said at the start, it it would have been pretty pretty plain sailing. Mm. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta you gotta get your your hits in early. Big learning. I think it goes the same with with the bowler too, doesn't it? Because if you look at the first two, um, the first few overs of 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 both of the games, right? Yash Dayal bowled fantastically in that power play. And I think that really set up RCB to be able to restrict Punjab to a smaller total. Whereas Sam Curran getting hit for 16 in that first inning, in that first over, really just changes the 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 outset of, of, of that match. RCB had the same, after two overs, had the same score that Punjab had for three. So they were always sort of on the front foot like there were 10 runs ahead coming out of the power play. And I think that is just such an important thing. And I think, as you say, James, it's really important for the batters to to hit that. But actually, as well, not actually, in addition to that, and I'm saying this from a bowler's perspective, it's important to see the bowlers hitting their areas and, and, and not conceding the runs early, actually keeping that pressure on because it, it, it sets your team up um, for, for such fantastic, um, for, yeah, Fantastically, yeah. So much. Um, I do want to say, Harpreet Bra bowled out of his mind today. Yeah. Um, I think he was the MVP, even though it was in a losing cause. I think he was phenomenal today. 
Um, and it's good to see him come good because for a few seasons, he's been a bit lackluster. Um, if he can take over as that sort of main spinner from Rao Jahar, I think that, that makes Punjab a, a dangerous team. Well, and also hopefully you can do well against other teams as well. Cause so far I think he's played, he's got 18 IPL wickets or something like that. And eight of them are come against the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Um, <laughs> so he obviously just seems to perform <laughs> well against RCB. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, which is good on him. I mean, they're, they're a decent team and, and he tends to do well against the top batsmen. So hopefully for, for Punjab's sake, he can, he can kind of do that as well, mm. but yeah, lots to learn. We're only five games into the IPL, six, six, six games into the IPL already. So much is going on. It's already promising to be a very good tournament. So we're going to bring you coverage as much as we can from it. And so we hope you stick around. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you've not subscribed already, please do. It helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to help us out even further, you can become a member by clicking the join button below. You can also follow us on social media. All the link trees are in the description. And I think that's everything. But we'll see you very soon.